Hi, I'm Pete Holloway. I'm a certified financial planner and a senior vice president with Hazlett Bird and Watson here in Wheeling. And as always, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to On Money. Whether you believe in global warming or not, all of us, I think, would be very happy with the idea of saving money on our heating and cooling costs. Today, we're going to be talking about green architecture from three different standpoints, green interiors, green residences, and green buildings. And I've assembled a team of three architects to talk to us about that, and I'm very pleased to have them with us. Kelly Clark is an architect, developing an interiors department with SMG Architects here in Wheeling. She moved to Ohio in 2006 to construct a house near Bar Camp, and has since worked with SMG on many projects, including an addition to Elmhurst and new construction at the Highlands in the town center. She promotes sustainable practices within her work and life and is involved in a group of young designers called Build Green who promote EcoFest, bringing green vendors to Ogilvy Fest. She's a native of Louisiana and a graduate of Virginia Tech in architecture, and we're glad you're in Wheeling. Gus Kaiafas is the principal and owner of Kaiafas uh, Architects. His education was in, from Kent State University, where he received a Bachelor of Architecture in 1986. He's registered in West Virginia and Ohio and is a native of Steubenville. He established the Chi Office Architects in 1992 in Wheeling. He has three children, ages 18, 12, and 8. And again, welcome. Thank and you. finally, uh, uh, Dave Schaefer, who is the president of Schaefer and Madama. He's been the principal of that firm since 1958. In over 50 years of private practice, he's personally designed and supervised over a half billion dollars of mechanical and electrical construction in various types of institutional, commercial, industrial, and residential facilities. Just to let our viewers know, I had hoped that we would be able to film this at the uh, Schrader Center, which you, that in fact, nice, yeah. <laughs> you built. Uh, we're taping this on Friday, and the big game is being played tomorrow, and the camera crew is actually out on the field right now setting things up. That's so a we shame, because that. Schrader was one of the first green buildings before green was cool, it, uh, and it took a lot of research. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that. Now, the cost of green construction is higher. There's no question about that uh, initially, and then there are cost savings down the road that should offset that. And I'd like uh, you each to talk about it from your specific area. Kelly's going to be talking about interior, green interiors. Gus will be talking about green residences, and Dave about green buildings. Kelly, let's start with you about the upfront costs and then the payoff and how that would work. Sure. It's a life cycle cost, which means you need to consider lighting, plumbing, appliances, insulation. There are many instances in home residences when they have switched to energy efficient appliances, their utility bills on a whole have gone down 25%. So while there aren't federal credits initially, there are savings in utility bills. Okay. Tell us a little about, uh, very quickly, green interiors. Most of us think of windows and roofs and solar panels. What specifically do you do what does a green interior mean to you there are many products you can use in your home that are greener you can specify bamboo which is a sustainable flooring uh, cork you can use cork on your countertops it's naturally mold resistant uh, you clean these things in the same way so they're not harder to take care of and many items are similarly priced when you look at the interiors whether you're specifying a green or non sustainable product Okay. Guess a little about green residences. Um, now, this I think would, the costs would be probably less significantly higher than the interiors. How, how do those work? Well, you know, green is such a broad term, and it really breaks down, and I see it as three categories, and that's energy efficiency, which could be perceived as green, uh, and there is environmental, uh, which is anything from where you construct your new home, uh, whether it's in a, in a, uh, a farmland or if it's the downtown urban atmosphere, and how you manage uh, the construction site and the runoff water. Uh, that's a green aspect. And then also um, the health of the occupants and the products and materials that you specify in those homes and the indoor, indoor air quality. So those are all green, to, so, to say that mm -hmm. sort of Can in you a give broad us some sense. specific examples of what some of the, the items would be in each of those categories then? Well, uh, of course, energy is something that is uh, very uh, conscientious on most people's minds right now and that's because it translates into dollar savings and that's why the government has created some incentives for people to invest in those mm -hmm. and for the most part they're uh, 30 percent of the cost up to fifteen hundred dollars and that's for uh, upgrading let's say of an existing home to better insulate uh, or to install more efficient windows uh, or mechanical systems would this work for solar panels on the garage roof or geothermal pipes under the ground, the, the same kinds of things? Well, yes, and those are actually renewable 
type of uh, investments, and there's no limit on that type of tax credit. That's actually 30% with no cap. Mm -hmm. uh, those are um, just, again, re renewable energy sources and renewable type of uh, credits that uh, they want uh, people to invest in. And those, of course, translate into dollar savings you know, later on. I'm going to ask a question, you may, and there may not be an answer, but if you put in something like a geothermal system, that has got to be expensive, digging up the ground, putting the pipes in, plugging the pipes in, doing mm -hmm. all that sort of thing. Is there any way that you can determine from the fuel, uh, the fuel savings or the energy savings, um, or is that too difficult a question because it depends on each job? Depends on the size of the home, uh, the, uh, the geographic area of uh, where the, the home is, is built. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, and, and, and Dave uh, is the expert, I think, on some mechanical... Okay. Uh, 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 I'll save the question. Saved. I'll save the question for you. Well, then. We, we tell most of our homeowners uh, a five to seven year payback on sometimes mm -hmm. the geothermal uh, technology, and that's always getting better because the costs are coming down, so the payback is, is shortened. And after that, it's gravy because you're saving on, on the energy and so forth. Right. That's right. Okay. Dave, maybe you could tell us a little about green buildings, and these would be substantial structures. Uh, green buildings co constitute a whole uh, concept of uh, expenses that are so much greater than a home uh, or anything else. Just because of the size. Because of the size mm -hmm. and because of what you're doing and all the possibilities to go green in a building. We speak of green as a broad general term, but green encompasses many, many things. Uh, the Green Building Council, which has the LEEDS rating systems, that's leadership in energy and environmental design, uh, rates buildings according to how green they are. Uh, and they do it in five different categories. Uh, they do it in sustainable sites, as Gus talked about, the sites you use, whether it impinges, whether it's downtown. Uh, they talk about water efficiency. Excuse me, just, um, I, I get to ask the dumb questions here. Hmm. What does a sustain sustainable site mean e exactly? I mean, would, would one place be better than the other, another, and why? Well, let's say you're going to build in farmland, so you're destroying farm acreage. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't build in a wetland. These places are restricted. Uh, when you deal in a uh, site that has, say, had a gas station on it, and now the tank has to be dug up in the earth, incinerated and stuff, mm -hmm. all these go into consideration of a site. Okay. And they deal with the sustainability of the site. Okay. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, give us the other fine. For the LEED, give us the other uh, examples there. Well, the water efficiency is the conservation of water. Uh, people are putting plants on their roofs and roof gardens to hold water and keep it from getting into the sewer systems, uh, handling runoff by allowing water to percolate into the earth rather than paving everything and just putting it into the municipal systems. Uh, energy and atmosphere. Uh, this is your sustainable stuff. This is your solar panels, your wind power, uh, all the things that you can do to cut energy costs in the building other than the equipment. Uh, and then you've got your maintenance and resources, your materials and resources, and this deals with, do you buy something from California that has to be trucked in here, or do you buy something locally, which has a lot less transportation cost and a lot less energy to bring it here. Uh, also, uh, in addition to that, um, I lost track of what I was gonna say. But, oh yes, uh, you try to deal with sustainable materials like uh, rapid growth forests, for instance, as opposed to uh, old hardwood, mm -hmm. so that you're dealing with a uh, resource that can be renewed right, 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 uh, right. rapidly. Uh, and finally, you deal with inter uh, internal or uh, environmental air quality, uh, which is a big thing anymore. You've heard of sick building syndromes mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff and green architecture tends to attack that kind of stuff and keep it from happening. Now that's um, where the building has been sealed too tightly and there's the, the carbon dioxide that we breathe doesn't get out the door. And well, not only that, but maybe the rugs that you have on the floor are, are emitting formaldehydes that you're sensitive to. Uh, mm -hmm. All these things go into indoor air quality. How much ventilation you bring in to clean out the building. It costs money to bring in ventilation because mm -hmm. you have to expend energy, mm -hmm. you know, to heat or cool the air. But by same token, it provides for a better atmosphere inside. That's and so great. all those things have to be balanced off. Now for a, a, a real-time uh, example, let's go back to Schrader, which, again, uh, you helped build. Um, 
and, and it's easy for our viewers to visit, what should they look at and what are maybe some of the secret things that they aren't seeing that is going on in the Schrader Center? Uh, you'll find that the flooring is made out of recycled tires. Uh, you look at the walls, and the walls are made out of recycled newspapers. In fact, the intelligencer sent tons of papers to the manufacturer, and our papers were used in those walls. Uh, you'll see a lot of wood construction. Uh, you'll see a lot of open air and windows, uh, open space. Uh, on the mechanical end, uh, it's not obvious to what you see, but there were quite uh, heat pumps were used. The sprinkler system was used as part of the uh, heating system. Uh, all of these things combined to save money in construction and to save materials and to save cost of construction. That's terrific. Let's uh, move on. Uh, Gus, you'd briefly talked about tax credits. Let's get into a little more detail on that, that if you go green and, you, <coughs> excuse me, I suppose you have to work it right, but the, the federal government, not the state government, but the federal government will give you a tax credit. Now, it's important that we talk about the word credit mm -hmm. because that comes off your taxes. In other words, if you owe, have a tax bill of $5,000 that you've got to send to Uncle Sam and you get a $1,000 credit, you only have to spend four, four, or send $4,000. So credit is the magic word whenever you hear the word tax. Uh, so if you could go into a little more detail about those numbers again, because I think this is really valuable mm -hmm. information. Well, uh, the credit is just that. It's a one for one, dollar for dollar uh, uh, reduction in the amount of taxes you would pay as opposed to a deduction, which is just a percentage of that money spent. And uh, again, from what I'm understanding, the, uh, the, the credit is 30% up to $1,500 if you're uh, upgrading an existing home. And that's on the product only, not the labor. Okay. okay. Uh, but then in... in um, in, in, in geothermal, wind, solar, those types of things are re, uh, renewable uh, energy type of upgrades. So that is 30% with, uh, with no cap. Now, is that uh, credit available <coughs> both to individuals and businesses, or is it, uh, is I know it just it, across the board? You can get about a 10% credit uh, to a commercial Okay. as opposed to because it's 30 percent on residential okay yeah this is for homeowners is the 30 right. so that that again uh, you know that this stuff really is expensive to get started with i think we're all familiar with those spiral light bulbs they last for two years or you know <laughs> a lot longer mm -hmm. they use less energy but boy they're expensive can i really? say something about those light bulbs uh, i did a little study on light bulbs and if you buy an in let's take a hundred watt lamp or 100 watts of light. You buy an incandescent light bulb for what, 50 some cents? Uh, the thing lasts for 750 hours. Uh, it uses 100 watts of power. Uh, you buy one of those twisty fluorescents, like you're talking about, you spend about two and a half dollars. But it lasts for 10,000 hours as opposed to 750, and it only uses 30 watts of power to produce that 100 mm -hmm. watts. You can go to LED, which is the latest technology, light emitting diodes and you'll spend maybe $12 for a fixture, but it'll last for 50,000 hours. I don't know how we know it'll last for 50,000 hours, <laughs> but it will. Uh, and it uses 15 watts. So you've gone from 100 watts to 15 watts. And the LED is really the light of the future. Hmm. Uh, Pittsburgh right now is doing a downtown renovation on their street lights, where they're changing from high pressure sodium, those orange lights that you're used to, mm -hmm. uh, which are pretty efficient in themselves, uh, to these guys who are just even more, you know, a tenth of the power, into a big city where you have thousands of street lights. Uh, that's, that's a big savings. Well, at Ogilvy, we'll be driving home from West Liberty after dark this evening, or close to dark, and um, Ogilvy is transferring its lights over to, to this system. Oh, their and, power bill is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, and it's lowering already. I guess they're getting payback on the power bill. And the other thing is that the lights that we're used to, they heat up, and if they're outside in the elements, they're going to heat up, freeze, heat up, freeze, and sooner or later go out. Mm -hmm. With the, mm -hmm. while the others, there, there's not a problem. Now, there are other costs, maintenance costs, and so forth. Uh, we can't ignore those. How are, the, for instance, again, with the what, what kinds of things?